uh, welcome you to my YouTube channel Cloud Ninja. My name is Varinder. Uh, in today's video, we'll discuss about the introduction to AWS Cloud, that uh, what AWS Cloud is, what are the different services it is providing, why you should be using AWS in case you are an entrepreneur or an engineer, why you should uh, start learning about uh, Amazon Web Services and what are the different features and uh, how it would be beneficial for you as an entrepreneur, as an individual or as an engineer if you are working in an organization. And my friends, it is, it is the time to upgrade your skills to really learn about AWS Cloud because uh, in these days, uh, the technology is transforming a number of organizations, they are adopting the hybrid cloud technology or adopting the public cloud, they are moving their infrastructure to the cloud. So without wasting much time, uh, let's move on to the first slide, uh, that uh, why we should be using AWS. Uh, my dear friends, there are a number of uh, cloud vendors like Rackspace is there, Microsoft Azure is there, Google is coming into picture, IBM software is there, but believe me, the kind of services, Amazon Web Services is providing due to which it is one of the largest cloud computing platform onto the planet Earth. And since I would say that uh, the services you will get will be given by the one of the giant in the retail market, which is Amazon. It is a big name. So they are also protecting their name and uh, they are providing the best of the best services uh, to the organizations, to the individuals. So that is why you will be able to see that so the number of entrepreneurs are coming into picture due to the reason that there is no as such upfront cost involved in buying the servers, buying the infrastructure. So you just need to run the code onto the cloud and you will be able to uh, give services to the customers from day one. So this is the reason that number of interest, uh, this entrepreneurs are coming into picture and they are saving a lot of money and this way number of cloud providers, they are selling their business. So more and more organizations are moving their uh, infrastructure on AWS. Because my dear friends, let's take an example from a, a typical organization when one organization has to build a server or need to run its application. Typically procuring a server and getting a server in the rack and getting the applications online, it takes around from 30 to 90 days on a map online and it's a typical process within the enterprise. So really within this span of time, company companies or enterprise uh, or organizations, they have already spent their money onto the hardware, but the time gap from 30 to 60 days is really a huge time because uh, different engineers are working, you know, your bidding department is bidding for the server, then it will come to your organization, someday it will be open, the change management uh, request will be raised and downtime will be required, and uh, then it will, then someone will bring the server online to really use the services provided. So within AWS or you know the server is available within a couple of seconds and you are ready to deploy your application and uh, really provide the service to the customers whether you are having customers internally or externally within your organization. So and the another thing is which I really like about AWS is that whether you are a new or an advanced user you will find useful information about the services ranging from introduction to advanced uh, features. So the thing is, if you open up the AWS console, you will find the services from building up a small server to, you know, artificial intelligence, Hadoop, or IoT, you name the services, they are providing the services to you. So they are having a large portfolio of services which they are providing. We'll see in the subsequent videos that, okay, which are the different services which are being provided by the AWS. And different range of services. The other thing is, uh, you you name the services which is provided by the Amazon. They are having a very good kind of documentation provided. Let's say you want to study about EC2, IAM, Identity and Access Management, or Cloud Formers. You just go to the Amazon website. They are having a wonderful documentation onto the uh, onto a service. How you can implement it? What are the best practices? How different organizations used? And they have published the case studies also, which uh, would be beneficial for you as a learner or as an uh, cloud architect when uh, you'll be implementing this AWS within your infrastructure. Or you'll be moving your infrastructure to the AWS. And, uh, you know, I have worked on to the Microsoft Azure as well, but I have found that 
you know, even though Microsoft is providing good services, but uh, a documentation is not there. People have provided the kind of documentation or MEPs onto the internet, but there is no one consolidated uh, area where you will be able to find out that, okay, let's say you want to have a site-to-site -site VPN or you need to build up the servers, you will not be able to find much information about the about the services Microsoft Azure is offering. So let's move on to the another slide. Uh, what are its different features? Uh, the first is deployment speed. So as we discussed that in a typical organization, generally it takes uh, 30 to 90 days of time to really build up a server and bring application online. So on AWS infrastructure, you'll be able to build up uh, the server within a few clicks and uh, your application will be online. So it really saw, uh, you know, saved a lot of money for the organizations in terms of uh, man days which are being spent by the different uh, uh, different uh, people within the organizations to really bring that server online, like data center team will be involved, application owners will be involved, your procurement department will be involved. So a lot of effort uh, was uh, was being generally involved in building up the server. So uh, when uh, this with AWS, uh, this deployment time really shrinked. So another is on the go pricing. So let's say if you need a server, then companies have to pay the upfront cost to the Dell or to the different vendors in a way to procure that particular server. But in this case, you'll be you'll be using only what you'll be paying. Let's say you're having a server within your organization and uh, it's having around uh, you know 96 GB of RAM or uh, number of processors into that. So and we are not able to utilize all those resources within, the, uh, within, your, uh, within your enterprise or an organization, but in case, and but you, have, but you have paid for that. But in case of AWS, in case you are using a single processor or only 10% of the RAM which is being provided, so you will be paying for that only. You need not to pay for the cost for the all the resources. Another thing is security. Uh, like in uh, organization, we are having a different security policies or different layers uh, or stack of security. Similarly, AWS provides us IAM, VPC, which is uh, virtual private cloud. You will be able to design your data centers within the cloud and, uh, you know, implement netting, security policies, uh, allow a certain number of ports only so that your servers within the VPC are secured, and IAM identity and access management through which uh, will be able to control the resources that who will be accessing what or providing the right kind of information to the right people at the right time that can be implemented by the IAM. We will be able to see the, we have published a couple of videos onto the IAM. The another thing is AWS Trusted Advisor Service, which I like most because you can see that uh, there are a number of organizations from NASA, Discovery and a uh, couple of other uh, a big online players they are onto the AWS. So this trusted advisor, AWS continuously monitor the environment, how these big players are using the AWS cloud platform and uh, and, and they generally make a note of that and provide suggestions to if you have adopted for, uh, opted for this service to you that how other organizations are using this and you can use these services in a way that uh, you'll be able to save money or you'll be able to secure your environment. So it is really a good feature and uh, AWS learns from the organization and uh, it really helps other organization to grow and uh, secure the data within the cloud, within their cloud. So who are the using, who are the organizations which are using AWS? We can go into the AWS side, but there are n number of organizations which are using uh, AWS. Let me give you a few examples. The first is Netflix. We all know that it is one of the biggest movies, movie streaming and video on demand platform. And you can imagine that uh, in case uh, Netflix or an organization like uh, Netflix, it has to provide services in such a great extent uh, wherein your videos will be accessed by the people from all over the world. What kind of infrastructure would be required at the back end? Let's say if one video is go viral and number of people are accessing it from the worldwide. So in that case, the infrastructure should be able to scale up in order to provide the services so that it's not going to the hung state. So AWS is able to provide, uh, you know, services wherein uh, a scaling would be required and, uh, and they need not to uh, pay any anything for the upfront cost. So 
as and when uh, things are required, they can scale up and scale down. Similarly, we know that Adobe is a big brand name, and, and when uh, when a name comes into the multimedia multimedia software related, so AWS has also uh, this Adobe system has also moved a couple of its services to the AWS cloud, like Adobe Connect is there, Adobe CQ5, Flash Media Server. And they are quite happy with that, the way uh, AWS is providing services. And Amazon has, and Adobe has saved a lot of money while using the AWS cloud platform. And uh, I have said that, uh, you know, the customers which are using the Adobe system, they are also quite happy with that. Because the cost is also reduced. Amazon has not, uh, this Adobe system has not paid any upfront cost. So that is why it is charging less to its customer. Because all the services are on the cloud and uh, they have really saved on to the sync licenses because since all the services are on cloud, so they are better able to secure the licenses as well. So this is the image which I have taken inside from the, you know, Amazon data center. And they are having a number of uh, edge locations worldwide where they are having a number of data centers and uh, due to which they are able to provide the service to its customer. And really AWS or Amazon is improving day by day. So thank you, my friends. Uh, that's it in this video. So if you really like this video, please uh, hit the like button. And if you really like this video, do share it with your friends and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that uh, you should be able to get uh, updates whichever uh, new videos we are launching. Thank you, my dear friends. Thank you for watching.